Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. My name is Petlana Donova and on today's episode I'm talking to John Cooney, Chairman of the Red and Yellow School of Advertising and Marketing, also known as the School of Magic and Logic. John, tell me about your background and how you came to be involved in the startup of Red and Yellow School of Magic and Logic. Svetlana, I was very involved in the industry. I come from an industry background. I'm what in industry terms they would call a suit. Um, and I got so what's a suit? A suit is an account director or an account executive or a business director. It, it, it really is the person who acts between the client and the agency. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd had my own two kids go into this industry um, and I'd seen how well they did when they knew what they were supposed to be doing. Mm. So I got in, involved in education through that way, not from the academic side, I, I do have a qualification, but that wasn't what brought me into the industry, it was more seeing how young people, when they were properly prepared for careers, did much better than people when they weren't properly prepared. So, so that was my background, but I'm, a, I'm an agency person. Now, tell me about those early days okay. at the school, how it started, who funded it, and what it looked like 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> wow. Um, it was started, unlike most other schools, it was started by an advertising agency called Ogilvy. Yeah. Um, and it was started because Ogilvy was employing young people from whatever sources they, wherever they could find them. And they found that it took quite a long time before they could begin to perform in, in the marketplace. Um, and they found that, you know, if only we could sort of do something to get them to perform from, a, from day one when they hit the road running. So what happened was over we started a school which was creative only to, 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 to train only creative people and that was copywriters and art directors and graphic designers. Later on, um, it, when I had become interested and I knew the people who had founded it, my thought was, um, why don't we also introduce the other side of the business, the strategic side, the logic. We call the creative side the magic, and then we call the, 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 the business side, the strategy side, the insight side, the logic. So we thought, wow, we'd always had a clear, a clear um, ambition, a clear goal, and that was to properly prepare students for their careers. We wanted them to be able to perform better than people who had come out of places that didn't have such a sort of a, a real world orientation. So you were the logic. I, I was the logic. You were the logic. Who was the it magic? Was, it, was, it was the Ogilvy people and it was started by Brian Saltrip and Alan Roth. And they started, so they were the magic and then we brought in in 1999, it was started in 1994 and five years later we brought in the logic. Tell me about how many students and how much staff you had 20 years ago and how that's going to this point in 2014. When we started, um, we, we really had a very, very small staff. I would, I would think about, we had, we had Brian and Alan, we had Hazel, and we had probably four or five backup staff. So I say we had, you know, we had less than 10. Um, and that was because it was creative only. And the numbers were fairly small. On the creative side, we, you know, in the total school, we probably had a maximum of 70 to 80 students. Um, because the creative courses are over a longer period of time. Um, and then when we brought the, 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 the logic aboard, it brought in a, a big new intake, which has grown from, I think, 31 in the first year to there were 80 last year. So, you know, that has really increased. So now the total size of the school has grown from, you know, those early numbers of 70s to 80s to into the 140s. Now, marketing and advertising has changed so much over the last 20 years. The history, the history of your school, um, especially so with the advent of uh, social media, yes. applications, mobile, the, yes. the encroachment of mobile on the African consumer. Uh, tell me about how the causes have evolved okay. uh, to accommodate this. And also, where does South Africa sit on, on the curve of uh, social media and advertising those you two know, things together? More and more we're finding out that people are saying we, want, we, we don't want to just run Africa from not in the places in Africa. We want to be on the ground. And one of the easiest ways and the quickest ways on the ground and the quickest way to get education across is to do it online, to do it digitally or to mix and matches, to mix and match. And some of the facilities in Africa, you know, the, the, the quality of the transmissions and the capacity of what they have is enormous. So now 
w we're not only able to take sort of logic and magic into the digital and online space, but we're able to take it places where we don't have to physically move yet, although we do have plans to move physically into more places. Into Africa? Into Africa, in, into, into Johannesburg first. <laughs> you know, sort of, so one step at a time. One step at a time, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really one step at a time, but we, we find that the need for, for to be properly prepared for the industry is growing geographically. Now tell me about this advent into Africa. It's something that is um, especially interesting for many South African companies. A lot of them are doing it with partners. Yes. Um, partners in those, in those countries which, yes. which would be potential markets for you. Yes. How are you planning on entering the continent? We have been looking at, first of all, um, a, a synergy in the way we work. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that's very important to us is knowledge on the ground in the local places because I'd like to talk a little later about what crossovers are and how we do them and we need to have good contacts in the industry in those places so although we could start distance learning first we would we would obviously need that now we we are agency neutral we work with all the agencies and all the agencies have offices and increasingly clients have offices throughout Africa and they are often looking um, we get a lot of African students coming here they're looking for the sort of offering that we have in those places. It would, it would be very sensible for us to look at what's happening out there and, we, and then talk to people, which we have been doing, but we haven't gone there yet. Okay, what is the advertising marketing industry outside of South Africa in the Sub-Saharan market look like at the moment and what is its potential for growth? Let's say we're talking 20 years, you're 20 years old. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your company is. Let's talk the African market 20 years from now. It will be, it will have a lot of brands and it will have a lot of brands competing using very, very good advertising, using advertising that has moved ahead of what it was like here 20 years ago. Um, there's definitely a big, big movement towards getting engagement, participation, activation, brand ambassadorship. And, and there is a there is a there's a there's a population that has not had brands for historically for quite a long time or the choice now they've got it and they can become you know wonderful advocates for advertising and I think what we will find more as the nature of advertising has changed your target markets will become more participative in the advertising process. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of brands do you think will be especially successful? in the African market, especially with this burgeoning middle class with an increasing disposable income? I, th I think first of all the brands that, 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 that provide good value um, and I think you know people who come, people who are moving forward have a natural knowledge of what good value is because they, they have to know that something works. So I think there is a utilitarian aspect to it but I also think it's what the brand stands for and what the conversation of the brand is. And I don't think that really works category by category of brand. I think it, it works in terms of more what the, brand, what the brand does in the marketplace, how the brand relates to the people. You know, very often it used to be just about this is what the brand says about itself. Um, now it's what does the brand do for us for itself. The big five words always in any, develop, in any market, developed or not, is what's in it for me. And I do think the brands, and it doesn't, you know, we can think, well, it's going to be Lani motor cars because there'll be increased wealth. Toothpaste is just going to be just as important. But it's the brands, I think, that really understand how they can provide value to their customers that will do well. And that value comes a lot, not only in what they do, but the way they communicate what they do. So it will be a market which I think is, in a funny way, more sophisticated than the market was here all that time back but it's still got a way to go. And if we look at some of the advertising in Africa, it really is very, very simple. And it's not so much, it's what it's advertising more than how it's advertising that looks to us maybe sort of quite elementary. You are a self-proclaimed suit, or you were, you were a suit. That's, that's why I don't wear jackets, <laughs> sorry. Turned entrepreneur yes. and teacher, mentor. Yes. Tell me about your biggest entrepreneurship lesson that you learned over the last 20 years. One of the things a lot of our students say when they leave here is they've had this wonderful um, chance of really having worked in the real world in here. Mm. Because, you know, one of the, I think, quite 
entrepreneurial things we did was we brought the real world from out there into here. So a lot of them say, use your time here to you, to, as if you've been in the real world. And I think crossovers were a, a device and a tool, which we didn't have before, which enabled us to do that. And we've done crossovers for where, where clients have taken the work straight out of what we've done here and put it up in their stores. I mean, Levi's designed stores. We've had, we've had FNB run, place you know, huge advertisements that were thought up here. And I think that was educationally an entrepreneurial thing to do. It, it, it wasn't there before, but, it, but it, it seems, after it was put in, it seems such a simple thing to do. Um, and I don't know if that's entrepreneurship, but it just, it just wasn't there and it did work. We've spoken so much about learning over the last 10 minutes. Are you still learning? How oh. important is lifelong learning? Oh, it's, it's so important. And, you know, you might get a lot of this color, um, but you, you can learn forever. And, and, and I think what the red and yellow does for me personally, it, it gives me the energy. You know, it's, 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 you've, you've, I've, I've got the energy, these young people, and what I learn is how much they want to learn. And, and, and that's a wonderful thing because it's not, this is not sort of, I think sometimes, and I must be careful what I say, but I think sometimes, you know, education can be like closed room in a box, you have to learn it. Whereas a lot of the motivation with these young people is make me good quickly, please. And, 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 and that you keep on learning how to do because they're keeping ahead of you. So you've got to keep on learning. My final question is always about the future. Yes. So I want you to tell me about how you see your future and also the future of the score, the red and yellow score of logic and magic. Well, I mentioned the energy of the students. Um, since this, the, the red and yellow going to its third level, which is now logic and magic in this, in this online digital space, um, that brings in a lot of new energy, a lot of younger people, and we have them. And, and that's a wonderful thing. So I'm sort of, I, I think I'm more, I hope I'm more than tolerated. <laughs> but I'm becoming, if you like, quite a, quite a wise person. So I think my role would, would hopefully be, and I think, I, I think I'd do it reasonably well, <laughs> would be to, to mentor people and to, and to say to them, you know, like, if you really look at the principles of our business, have stayed constant. The, 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 the tools that we use have changed enormously, especially in the online space. But the conversation around what we do has changed so much. And I think one of the things that you've got to, to, if you want to know where you're going, and you do, these young people do know, you've got to know where you came from. Because unless you, you can see the two, um, it doesn't work together. So my synergy at the moment is I'm learning from the new people, and I've got the, the understanding from myself. So I think in that area, I can provide quite unique and, 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 and need, needed advice, needed when asked for. <laughs> Thank you, John. That was John Cooney, Chairman of the Red and Yellow Score, and this was the Entrepreneurial Edge. Thank you for watching. See you again next week.